Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over and by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, now, are you ever going to get tired of my song choices? Uh, no, it's always my favorite part of the show. Uh, I have to say that Candlebox is far behind. Uh, I remember rocking out to that when I was a, young, a little younger. I, I don't really like that song now, but I remember at that time, I really loved that song. Yeah, it did well back in the day. It was off there. Was that off their Black Hole Sun album? Oh, I don't even know. It's not know. the name of the album, actually. It's called something else, but it was called something else. That, they had that deep voice, they had that raspy early '90s like uh, rock voice. Uh, that's what they. That's what they had down. Yeah, it was Chris Cornell. He came from Temple of the Dog. They had that Hunger Strike song. He's uh he's dead now. So, moving on. Now. <laughs> well, moving on, this is uh, episode number seven, or as I call it, 007, uh, insert sound effect here, the James Bond sound effect, of uh, We Should Be Better at This, featuring uh, yours truly, Eric Lecky, and my partner across the way there, Chris Donovan. How you doing, guys? Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Chris underscore Donovan. Also, make sure you, when you're on your favorite podcast place, uh, subscribe, would you? Subscribe, rate, review. You can talk all the shit you want to about my mom as long as you give us five stars. Absolutely. Five stars earns you the right to talk about my mama. <laughs> Even though I talk about her all the time, because I miss you, you, you. We always talk about my mama. <laughs> so how you been, man? What's going on? How was Christmas? Well, yeah, we had our nice little uh, Christmas break, uh, both from school and from podcasting. Uh, it was nice to kind of be home with the kids and, and hang out with them. Uh, Christmas is a rough time of the year for me, though, man. I got my wife's birthday on the 23rd, my mom's birthday on the 24th, and my stepmom's birthday on the 24th. Plus, you know, the whole Christmas and Jesus's birthday thing. Wait, Jesus was born? What happened? What are you talking about? Well, supposedly. I mean, he wasn't born on December 25th. That's a made-up pagan holiday that the Christians <laughs> stole from. But, but I mean, he was born – I think they said they, he was born in April sometime But uh, for realsies. But uh, Christmas is when we celebrate it. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine him moving that rock out of the way. Oh, wait. That's Easter. Damn it. <laughs> I screw this stuff up all the time. This is all why I don't go to time. church. If I go to church, well, uh, I'll just catch on fire. You, you, I don't even think they'll let you in the doors. Um, or it's a sign of the apocalypse if you do walk through the doors. Well, tell me about your uh, Christmas. Uh, didn't you and the family go somewhere? Yes, we actually jumped on a plane and flew to Washington State where most of my family is from. Uh, I moved to California back in 2001, and I can honestly say I did the right thing by moving to California away from my family because my family's pretty crazy sometimes. Uh, we drink a lot. There's a lot of stuff that happens, and... Uh, well, between my liver not liking me anymore and just some drama that happens, it's just yeah, – uh, I love my family, but I'm glad I live in California. Do you think that the uh, space uh, difference, the time travel difference uh, is, is kind of saves your relationship with your family? Would it be worse or better if you still live there? Well, the situation right now is my sister owns a house and everybody lives with her, including – that's my brother, my sister-in-law, uh, our two nephews, and then my parents live there also. They have like uh, in-laws quarters. So with all of them living there, it's just a lot of stress. So I think it's saving my relationship with my family. Yes, it's ruining all of theirs, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was that trip? Uh, I mean, you, you took the whole family. Did you guys do Chris, double Christmas, like one at your house and one up there? Or did you just kind of keep it to a single Christmas? We got uh, we got back uh, the day we got back a couple days ago. So then Evelyn's parents, my wife's parents, were waiting for us at the house, and we. Um, we had the Christmas. We got home at like midnight, but the kids were awake. So then we did have a second Christmas at like one in the morning on that Saturday. So it was, it was nice. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. I mean, I can't complain. I'm, I'm a lucky guy. So what about you? What'd you do? 
Well, you, well, one thing I wanted to ask you about, I've never traveled for Christmas before because I just want to avoid that time of the year and the air travel and all that. How do you do the gifts? Like, I mean, do, or do they literally have you unwrap them and then you got to pay to ship them all back to your house? I mean, I'm a little confused as to how that process works. Well, what we did was as we shipped up a couple boxes before we went up there and then we had one checked bag full of toys and presents for all the kids that we wanted to bring. And we brought that on the plane because it's cheaper to actually check a bag than it is to actually send stuff. So we sent two bags and had one check bag. But, of course, all the packaging around these damn things, it's, like, giant. So on the way back, we fit it all in, like, a suitcase and a half. Wow. That's not bad, then. That's pretty efficient. Uh, for me, you know, it's pretty hectic. As I said, wife's birthday, mom and stepmom's birthday. So it's one of those things where you're on, like, a, a, a time limit. Like, I'm running a stop uh, stopwatch, and it's like, okay, we got two and a half hours at this place. Then we got to go someplace else for three hours and then someplace else for four and uh, and somehow kind of manage to uh, keep everyone uh, appeased and happy. It's been quite difficult. Uh, had a lot of fun, though. Uh, every year on my mom's birthday, the 24th, we meet at my grandma's house. Um, and, uh, my grandma puts on, oh my God, it's really horrible, uh, uh -oh. Christmas pageant. Oh, oh geez. Really? Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, uh, one of those things that my grandma, you know, my grandmother's the matriarch of the family. We're Italians. The matriarch thing's pretty important. So she, she's essentially the godfather. I mean, she, what she says goes. And when she says, when she casts you in the play, you're in the play and you better participate. And so, uh, uh, it's been pretty cool. She's been doing it so long. I ori I originally uh, debuted as the baby Jesus in a manger when I was a little baby myself, and my own children have all played baby Jesus. So uh, we've cycled through, but uh, I got to be Santa Claus this year. That's because um, you're getting fat. I'm getting, it, it, you know, you, you know how grandmothers, they, they, they can uh, just cut you right to the bone in the sweetest way possible. But when she's helping me get dressed in the Santa's outfit to surprise all the kids, uh, she goes, oh my, I don't really think you need much padding. Yeah, right. And then they're like, it's you like, could probably thanks, grow a beard. Yeah, right. Or you could probably yeah. grow a beard all year long just in training. Yeah. It's like, thanks, Grandma, for, for cutting me right to the bone. The other thing she's famous for is she's uh, she's just such a caring woman. She gives a ton of gifts and she has so much charitable stuff. But, but she's famous for really messing up Christmas gifts. She can't keep – uh, all the people straight. So uh, we, we all like to compare. We have a family tradition where afterwards we all compare what we got from grandma and uh, just kind of talk about it. So in the past, I've gotten uh, Christmas ornaments that had a different child's picture in it. Um, <laughs> one time, I mean, almost like the movie, The Christmas Story, where the kid gets the pink uh, bunny costume oh, or whatever. My favorite. I've gotten I've gotten things really, really similar where she addressed it to me, but inside was like a, a pink tutu. But it was like for like a five year old, you know, and it's like, well, OK, thanks, grandma. <laughs> You're like, I'll but just, we compare. I'll just hand this down to my daughter. It'll be all good. <laughs> It'll be all. But uh, it was fun. And, you know, as you said, the the, Chris, the kind of frustrations of family. Sometimes I wish I had moved uh, farther away. Um, uh, I love my family. and We're all pretty close. But, you know, it's you get that many people together that have known each other for a long time. There's always issues and problems and someone drinks too much and someone says an inappropriate comment or pinches your wife's butt or whatever. You know, it, it happens. Well, nobody pinched my wife's butt, but I can honestly say that there's a lot less communication, but a lot less filtering. So when they do communicate, it's not necessarily the nicest things. <laughs> But they do – when they do not communicate is when they shouldn't – that's when they should be saying what they need or what they should be doing and stuff like that. So it was really – yeah, it could be – it can be awkward at times. Let's just say we had – we had 5, 10. We had 10. You know, we had 20. We had 15, 15, 15, 15, 16 people in the house. Oh, goodness. Yeah, 16 people. It was, it's nuts. And it snowed. It was a white Christmas. It was all the good stuff. So my kids enjoyed it. They didn't get to see all the rigmarole behind the scenes. But, uh, but there was some stuff that went down and – well, I'm back here now. <laughs> I have, I've always thought that uh, uh, I think – and I, I see this a lot with my dad who lives up in Reno. I visit him you know, a few times a year and he comes down once or twice a year. I think because they don't see you all the time, they it's like they have to cram all the nagging and complaining into <laughs> like the – like it's literally like it wouldn't be that bad if it was spaced out over a year or over six months or nine months or what have you. But because it's like, well, Eric's here, I got to tell him all of the things that have been bugging me in, in the next uh, – uh, six hours that he's here and it just kind of comes off as a little too much and overwhelming but jesus Agreed. it's like i i need a, a cocktail and a nap when that when that day is done oh yeah we had probably about 64 empty beer boxes by the end of the week good lord well what about new year's uh we, we not only missed christmas we kind of had a break off here for new year's uh did you do anything spectacular no nothing we just chilled at home uh my my uh, in-laws were hanging out my brother-in-law's there we just basically hung out and that was pretty much it my my 14 year old daughter did go uh to her boyfriend's house which 
I wasn't Ooh. necessarily. Um, that's a hard. That's a hard one to take on that's board with. But again, yeah. uh, it's it, again it's my stepdaughter, so I didn't have a whole lot of ground to stand on. But that's where she went, and uh, well, let's just say I'm having a grandkid. No, oh my goodness, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, uh, one thing too, do you you know anyone? Honestly, if you polled your friends and family, whenever, you know, New Year's is supposed to be this big party day, but do you know anyone who actually did anything super fun on New Year's? Because I I swear, I I talked to 50 people and everyone has almost virtually the same story. Hung out at home, tried to keep it low key, maybe had a friend or two over or a family member over or a cousin over, what have you. But but yet it's like all these people that are out doing stuff. Who are these people? Because I've never actually met anyone. Not this year and probably not for the last like six or seven years because I'm getting old. I don't even say older. I'm just getting old. Um, but before, oh, hell yeah. There was parties everywhere. We'd go party hopping. We'd make sure we're at the last party at midnight. Years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I try to avoid that day like the plague. If the cops are just looking for a reason to uh, put you in handcuffs on that day. Let me put it this way. Agreed. There's so many arrests. They don't use handcuffs on that day. They use zip ties because they don't, they run out of handcuffs. They use zip ties. Yeah, what you do is you find the cop that's driving fast. You follow him. <laughs> they can't see you then, right? And that how it they works. can't see you then. Oh, you always were a tricky guy. Well, before we before we get into uh, my my one of my favorite segments, because I know we're going to talk movies here in a little bit. Yes. Uh, what about the big? Uh, well, they call it a rocket. If you cannot hear my space, uh, my sarcasm. But the UFO in the sky out here in Southern California about a, about a week ago. Did, what did you? What do you really think it was? I have no idea. But we we were flying that day, so we didn't see it until we got up to Washington. And by the time we got up there, my wife was actually kind of frustrated that she was not here to see it and it looked it was badass it was pretty uh immense we we happened to catch it we were driving uh into la and uh it was over the sky and we just happened to be parking uh at where we were going and my daughter uh, audrey uh, pops out of the car and goes oh my god what is that in the sky and i look up and i i told her i have no idea and you know my first thought they were of course all talking ufo my first thought was it was a nuclear uh, uh kind of a warhead heading towards us from uh north from north korea, korea. Mm-hmm. i really thought i'm like i even told my wife i said god damn trump like i immediately <laughs> just thought i immediately thought that it was like one of his freaking tweets sent something off and this is north because think if north korea launches one it's heading to the west coast it's either going to be san francisco or la no, who the hell is going to bomb portland it already looks like it's been bombed and homeless for years so it's got to be san francisco or la i feel bad for hawaii because they're halfway here so we'd have to like really be on it for them to get it for for them to not get it first. But yeah, I can honestly say that would have been my first thought. My second thought would have been like, damn it, I didn't open my presents yet. <laughs> I really want to know what I got. Um, but yeah, no, that was it was quite freaky. Uh, I I guess I buy the explanation that it was a SpaceX rocket. But let me tell you, it was enough to where you you know as people are getting out of their cars and staring up at the sky, there was a weird odd sense of a community. Uh, uh, come togetherness because I think we all for a moment thought it was something else and it reminded me for just a brief moment of that period of time right after 9-11 where it kind of felt like the whole nation was together there was a there was a feeling of everyone's looking up and going if that's a UFO we're in a lot of trouble if that's a nuclear warhead we're in a lot of trouble and it was just one of those everyone was calm everyone was just uh, I think a little flabbergasted by it but it was camaraderie uh, huh like, like oh it was oh, big time yeah. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of that it was a really interesting time well, I don't know That's about fun. you, Mr. Chris. Uh, I was quite excited to see a movie recently, so I think I'd like to talk a little movies. Hooray, hooray, hooray for Hollywood. Let's do it. That movie, of course, is the big movie that came out this year. Is a movie that uh, myself and my daughter, and I'm sure many others, were anticipating all year long. It was on my calendar. The only Coco. movie I put. Coco uh, and Ferdinand the Bull. Those are the two movies. <laughs> no, um, the, the only movie that I put on my calendar uh, when it came out, you know, earlier in the year, and that is the Star Wars uh, Last Jedi movie that came out uh, about two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, you know, I actually uh, it opened up on Thursday night out here in California, and I actually had my Christmas party, my company Christmas party that night. And I, I was going to skip the party and go to the movie, but my wife talked me into going to the party, considering it was a newer job and first time being around. And I'm kind of in charge of things sometimes. So I had to go to the party. And then Friday, we couldn't go because I didn't get home till late. And then Saturday morning, we were there like 10 a.m. I was like, we're going. I don't care. Get the kids up. Let's get out of here. So I was really excited to see the movie. I would have to say, uh, just in case you're listening to this and you haven't seen the movie yet, we might give you some spoilers. So we will be giving three, you spoilers. Two, 
one. <laughs> okay, now we have we have gotten rid of all those people we don't like now because they haven't seen the movie. <laughs> right, and I think the first one to get to is, can you believe that R2-D2 was the bad guy all along? I mean, I, I, honestly, see, that was just for the people who were still listening who didn't want the spoilers that uh, that hung around a little too long. And the two people that probably laughed at that joke. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But uh, uh, yeah, I saw it, I saw it a day early as well. I saw it on Thursday. I took the whole family. It was a great experience. It was the first time I've ever taken the whole family to like a big movie like that. Um, I've taken my I took my daughter to uh, Force Awakens and Rogue One. We waited in line and did all that stuff. But this was like my six year old, my eleven year old, my wife and myself just kind of all going. It was a really fun event. And then they went back and saw it again on the day I had to go to work uh, just a couple days later. So uh, they, they definitely soaked it in. Yeah. No. I plan on going again. My son loved it. My daughter, who is now six, it was her first time. You know, the first when two years ago when the Force Awakens came out, I went first with my wife because I didn't trust my kids. They're going to be like, I got to pee. I got to pee. All stuff. Well, unfortunately, during this one, I had to pee. <laughs> so I had to get up a few minutes into it, but I got back and my wife like you didn't. Well, miss it was long enough that, uh, you know, you probably had to pee about 18 times because it was like the cycle of a day. Right. And the well, theater that I go to serves beer. So maybe just a little bit that had to do with it. But oh 10 in goodness. the morning, eh, I wasn't too drunk. Yeah, you got you. Got, wow, we're gonna have to go to the movies together. Then that sounds great. Yeah. Well, give me some of your thoughts on it. Then uh, I was excited to talk. I, I hated that there was this break that we had where uh, it was so fresh in my mind two weeks ago, and now it's kind of I'm trying to think of all the things that were exciting to me and all that. But wh- what were some of your thoughts? Uh, I, I liked it. I, I do agree that the side story of uh, um, of Finn falling in love with that other not falling in love, but having Rose. feelings for Rose. I liked it, but it was like I wanted foe and a uh, Poe. I wanted foe. That's foe and Finn. That's Finn and <laughs> well, Poe. He really likes that food. I think that was a really interesting side story. He really likes Foe. That was my Brangelina moment right there. I wanted Finn (laughs) and Poe to be in the movie together a little bit more because I felt like we'd get a little more action out of it. It'd be like uh, Lethal Weapon back in the day or something. But I wanted that. Plus, I I mean, I remember waiting at the very end going, okay, I haven't seen the Gorilla Walkers yet. Where the hell are they? And then bam, they showed up. And I thought that was cool. Um, Porgs, not against. I wish he would have eaten one. I wish Chewbacca would have eaten a pork. I do. I really wish he would have just. You know, nom, nom, that, nom, nom. that would have that would have been a really funny moment if he just snatched one in his mouth like it was a chips uh, snack, like on that drive home on the Falcon. I would, it would have been really cool if he would have just looked at the other porks sitting there like, are you going to eat that? And just be like, <laughs> hell yeah, I'm going to eat that. And then just take a big old bite out of it. Be, well, I, w- I was uh, I, I was d- definitely concerned uh, about the length of the movie going in. I knew that that would play an issue. Sometimes uh, there's the tendency of trying to do too much in these types of movies. We see it a lot in the superhero movies. You know, the uh, the, the the ones that are the best, the Iron Mans, uh, yes. and some of the ones that you and I have talked about before that are good, the really good quality ones. They're two hours or under, or right at the two hour mark. Anytime these superhero movies start getting to two and a half hours, two hours and forty minutes, there usually is a big chunk of that movie that. You you could just cut out uh, because it's excess. They're trying to do too much. I felt Star Wars was the same thing. The scene of them, of uh, Finn and Rose having to go down to the casino planet. Yes. That entire 20 minute segment could have been cut completely and uh, you wouldn't have missed out anything on the story because they think about it. They got nothing accomplished there except for meeting uh, the Benicio del Toro character. They could have encountered him in, in a different uh, storyline. He, I, my, my theory was I think he could have been a prisoner on the ship that they were on who they know can help hack you out. And maybe that's how they bust him loose. They could have avoided the whole going down to that planet. And the other thing that bothered me. They go down to this planet, and remember, time is of, of the essence. It's, hey, hurry, we don't have much time. And they go down there, and they're sitting there laughing in the stables, petting those weird horse-like creatures, and they're getting, like, sidetracked. I, the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, isn't time of the urgency? Like, you, you seem to be getting pretty well sidetracked for some of this, like, you know, with some of this minutia. Well, here's my uh, thought. Just, here's my thought, and this is like a conspiracy theory slash fan theory. Okay, so Benicio Del Toro is this, like, code breaker. Yeah, he's going to break the code, which I thought was kind of lame. Because, again, it's Star Wars. Just use Chewie's blaster and shit will break break and work and all that good stuff. But I'm like, okay, fan theory. Benicio Del Toro is the collector in the Marvel Universe. Star Wars, or Disney owns Star Wars and the Marvel Universe. Do you think that they're going to cross paths one day? That is an interesting concept because you're right. He is the collector. And, you know, the first thing my daughter said, she whispered to me during in the theater when we were watching it. She goes... Hey, that's the collector. That's you know what? I like your daughter more than you. It, it was it was literally that was the moment she whispered that in my ear. And I she, and, is, you know, she's a young kid. She doesn't recognize that actors play different roles. She in her mind, she's like, hey, I recognize that guy. That's the collector. That's an interesting thought. Um, it's I, not going to happen, like but whatever. 
No, it's not going to happen. Uh, the other the other one I thought of was Andy Serkis, who plays uh, Snoke. Yes. Does he even do anything like as a man, as a male, as a human anymore? Or is he just only act in CGI roles? Does his agent only submit for CGI roles? He, no, he, he's in um, he's in the Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. He got his what arm. does he play? What does he play? A gumball machine? No, like, no, I mean, no. You haven't. You know what? He he's the guy that gets his arm cut off. There was the it was a, it was a nod to Empire Strikes Back. It was the second movie in the trilogy where they were like, okay, well, we got to cut somebody's arm off because that happened in all the Star Wars trilogies, which did not happen in this movie. Pissed me off. Right. Um. But no, he's in that one, and then he was in the new um. What was the movie that just came out? Was it Thor? He's in Thor, isn't he? He was in Thor. Yeah. It was like the two movies he does, and of course, Lord of the Rings. He was in there. He killed somebody, and then he turned into Gollum. Right, but my point is, is he's a lot of CGI. But it, what's funny is, uh, it must be a smart tactic because if you look at his uh, IMDb page, his page is filled. This guy is always working, and it's not like he's that great of an actor. But I think he's really good at whatever roles he's choosing. Yes. And I mean, he, even in War of the Planets of the Apes, he played Caesar. I mean, he this guy has been um, the Supreme Leader Snoke. He's been in the the, the Hobbit. He's I mean, or he's been in a lot of these movies where he's CGI, and it's like maybe that's the right way to go because he gets a lot of work. He does. He does a lot of work. I think he does a lot of voice stuff too. But I mean, I think he's mastered the craft of that the bodysuit with the dots everywhere, and it takes his face and like he can he the, the, he did it with the whole Gollum thing with Lord of the Rings, and that carried over to the Planet of the Apes movies where he's like he's crawling around like an animal. Like he's really nailing that. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors right now. That's for damn sure. Oh, he really. I think you're right. I think what it is is if you're a director and producers, and you're having to put this movie together, and there's going to be a voice actor that you need for a a. C- CGI'd role, you go and get the guy who you know can nail it, and you just – it's almost like an insurance policy. Like, hey, no matter what, we know this guy's going to nail this particular role, and so maybe that's why he keeps getting those roles. It's it's just – it keeps self-perpetuating. You know, after Lord of the Rings, everyone's like, yep, I need something in CGI. Go get Andy Serkis. Well, that's exactly how it is. If you look at Captain Phasma, she was in uh, Game of Thrones. She already knows how to fight with a sword. She already knows how to be physical, and she does her own stunts. Same thing with um, – the dude from Lord of the Rings, he was cast in all these other movies with swords and stuff. Uh, they, if they're trained already, like, oh, um, uh, the people, the chick from um, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, uh, she was trained in those movies. So then they're like, okay, we're having this other movie. Who should we cast? Well, she's already trained in martial arts or hand-to-hand combat. Let's just get her. Yeah. She's a good actress. So that does it, it, the elf, too, from Lord of the Rings. He's been yeah. in all sorts of That's why he was over on the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I can't remember his name. What the hell's his name? Oh gosh, I'm, I'm I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, uh, before we bring our uh, special uh, secret guest in here in just a moment, I wanted to also talk, bring up that uh, I thought Daisy Ridley. Um, I like her more and more. I mean, as uh, when the four, when she was first cast on The Force Awakens, I kind of thought, well, I'm not quite sure. I wasn't 100 percent buying in. I thought she was great in that one, but I thought, could this be a one off? Could this be another Hayden Christensen in the prequels right. kind of a thing? That was my first thought. But I thought, you know, she was better than Hayden Christensen. But let's see. I got to say, after this particular installment, I thought to myself. You know what? She's perfect for the role. She's perfect for young, especially seeing her viewed through my daughter's eyes, who is seeing someone that's like a heroine that she that she can really pursue and go after. I mean, I really thought that was cool. I thought the Carrie Fisher scenes were tender and and really nice. Yes. Uh, I loved all the comedy. There was a lot of really good comedic scenes uh, in this movie. A lot of good callbacks. Um, Overall, 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 one to ten. Um. One being the worst, ten being the best. Let's see. Come on now, I give say it, a number. I give it. A, I give it an eight. But if I was able to re-edit the movie and knock it down by twenty minutes, uh, I would say a, a nine. Yeah, no, I'm sitting at eight right now too. With a, I'm at like eight and a half because I really like the movie. Again, with lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to. Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. The length, the length killed me a little bit, but other than that, I liked it. I don't care if there were some corny scenes with people flying through space. I don't give a damn. Yeah, no, it was all good. But yeah, well, it. on that note, we're going to bring in our uh, Star Wars expert. She also just happens to be my daughter who had some thoughts on the scene. Okay, I'll watch my mouth. So, uh, yeah, right. Okay, I'm going to go grab her. Okay. 
So while he does that, there he is. See, in the background, you can hear him. So make sure you go to, uh, what is our podcast? Uh, we should be better at this.podbean.com, or you can go to, uh, what's the iTunes, uh, Apple Podcast. You can go there. Just Google or search, we should be better at this. You can follow me on Twitter, Chris underscore Donovan, or you can go to DonovanChris.com. That's my website. It takes you directly to my Twitter, whichever you prefer, because I like to tweet. Unlike a uh, guy. Oh, he's back. Okay. I'll stop talking. Okay. Uh, go ahead and put your earpiece in. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have a couple of questions, but we'll get started here in just a second. So uh, this is – I'd like to introduce my daughter, Audrey. Uh, she is our Star Wars expert here, and she has a few things to say. Audrey, say hi. Hello. Wonderful. This is Chris. He's over here on the other end of this microphone. And uh, I think first of all, we wanted to ask you your general thoughts on the film overall. You, you and I saw it together once, but then you saw it again on your own. What are some of your thoughts? Well, I definitely think – think that the critics were right about how it's a film that hasn't been done in the star wars trilogy before i personally loved it but many people i think older people think that it's not a true star wars film but i disagree with them because they're all now why do you think that (laughs) they wouldn't say it's a true star wars film uh because they're just mad that it didn't work out the way they thought okay yeah no I, i could see that um what, uh, so Chris saw the movie too. Uh, him and his family cool. are big fans as well. Uh, they yeah. really liked it. Uh, what did you think about the length of the movie? Um, I have a feeling that they could have trimmed it by like 30, 20 minutes. Like the whole Canto bite. I loved that scene, but it wasn't really a big, like important part to the film. Yeah. I think they could have trimmed it. Like instead of, you know, at the end of the movie when that boy, that awesome scene when the boy uses the force to get the broom, which I thought was really cool. Yes. They could have used that in as like the boy was like a, um, a child to one of the resistance fighters. Right. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with that. There was a way that they could have tied in, still made that really cool scene, which was definitely an awesome. I love that as a, as the close to the movie. Uh, but they could have done it another way. Well, Audrey, what were some of your key scenes? Like if, if I were to say, give me your three or four, uh, scenes that really stood out or moments that really stood out, what do you got? Well, I was the whole Leia in space when the, the shuttle blew up and then she like gets sucked out into space. I was very confused when she survived. I've always known that she can use the force and that she was very strong with it. Like Luke, but I genuinely thought that they would kill her off in the last Jedi. I just thought the whole moment was like mind blowing. No, I think, I think that, uh, I think they played it really right because you, we all know she uses the force. We've never really seen her use it. She's Luke's sister. She's very powerful with the force. I think that's the reason that she's lived so long. Han Solo is just lucky. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? You're probably pretty right. Like, Hansel almost has the force by proxy. Like, yeah, he's right? around so many people that has the force. He kind of is lucky because think of how old he's lived to be a smuggler, which he's probably not well liked in the galaxy overall. Or He's either loved or hated in the galaxy overall. The only reason he survived is he's got a mouth on him and he he, he can talk his way out of things. Oh. But you're right. He's lucky. But Leia is good. <laughs> like, oh. one, one of them's lucky. One of them's good. Well, he's also, lucky because yeah. he has a walking teddy bear that shoots people. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I beat you to it. All right, so so that was so that was good. Uh, what are some? Uh, well, give me another uh, scene of the movie or something that you thought was important that stood out to you. Um, uh, that throne room scene with uh, Ray, Kylo Ren, and Snoke. That definitely was my favorite scene because I loved the fact that it wasn't your average Darth Vader and Luke scenario. Yeah, they fought together and Kylo did kill Snoke to protect her. But in the end, he didn't turn away from the dark side. Right. He, he kind of – there was that moment. I thought that was a really cool job by the director. Not only – because that was a really cool scene. Chris, I don't know what oh you gosh. thought about that. But that was a really cool – I really dug that fight scene a lot and how he, he tricks Snoke by just twisting the blaster and getting it right in his side. Lightsaber. Uh, lightsaber excuse yeah. me. And getting it right in his <laughs> side. Yeah, see, my daughter will correct me on Um but but I, I love the, how they toyed with you and you really thought for a moment, man, this is going to be a pairing up. The whole rest of this movie is going to be them pairing up together. But in the end, it was like, no, he stayed to the dark side. I thought that was a, a great, OK, a but great think, moment. think about this angle. They were talking to each other in their thoughts in different places. Right. When else did that happen in the Star Wars universe? Luke uh, and Leia and yes, the Return of the can. Jedi. Yeah, that's so are, right. So are they brother and sister? Well, Audrey's theory was that they were, before we went and saw the movie, she was absolutely convinced so no, that they were sister and brother. And I kind of was buying into – I thought that that could have been a storyline. Do you think it's true what he said when he told her 
uh, trust, look inside of you. You know, your parents were just, you know, people that dropped you off and they were nothing. They were nobody. They're buried in some grave in some dumb planet we've never heard of, whatever. Um, or was he just psyching her out with that information and maybe he really knows that they're, you know what I mean? Like, is it true what he said or is it throwing us off the scent? Do you think he's smart enough to know that? Well, I think that, go ahead. um, I think that maybe Snoke tricked her or tricked him into seeing the wrong parent. So maybe he just wanted him, maybe Snoke wanted Kylo to think that she's just a nobody and that he shouldn't care for her or care about her. He just wants, um, Snoke just wants Kylo to focus on his training and becoming the powerful Jedi. Yeah, I also think that he's a uh, millennial that will throw a fit if something doesn't go his way, and he'll use his lightsaber to blow stuff up. So He, he does seem to have that like millennial anger temperament issue, like oh, self-centeredness. God, yes. So really much does. angst. Well, Audrey, give me give me one more scene uh, that that you thought was uh, that really stood out to you. I know we talked about a bunch you and I personally, but give us one more scene that you thought was was great. The Luke and Kylo fight. I loved how um, I noticed. Me and my mom both noticed that they made extra effort to point out that Luke didn't have any footprints, like red footprints. So it was kind of a hint to the plot twist. Plus, did you recognize what lightsaber he had? Exactly. He had his uh, old light. No, he had the blue lightsaber that had recently got, gone cut in half. Correct. But... He, had, he had his original lightsaber that he got from Obi-Wan Kenobi back in the day, which was Darth Vader's or Anakin's before he turned to Darth Vader. Yes. Right. And I thought that was another really, really well. First of all, the whole him brushing his shoulder. Off, <laughs> that, was that was such a cool scene because he's trying to goat him into come down and fight and to buy more time. And what a way to go to guy with anger issues than to just take all of the brunt of that stuff and brush off your shoulder. That was such a great scene. But no, uh, Audrey's right. The whole, you know, they showed you how very easily if you just barely touch that sand that or salt, salt that the red shows up underneath and then during the fight scene no red shows up underneath but you don't really quite, quite catch it at no, first you, you, you kind of really have to pay attention to it. so so audrey what are some of your thoughts maybe going forward i know you're kind of a conspiracy theorist with all this just like chris <laughs> what are your thoughts going forward on the uh the where it goes from here well i want to see what will happen with the relationship between finn and rose is she a love interest for him or are they just going to be friends also I am a supporter of all love interests for her, but I really want to see who Ray's love interest will be. Will it be Finn, the reluctant but passionate resistance fighter, or the hot-headed resistance leader Poe Dameron? Or even would she fall in love with her opposite force-heavy twin, Ben Solo? Yeah, there's really all three of them are open, but they're not going to – I think her and Finn are going to be uh, be- besties. They're going to be best buddies. Yes, sir. They're going to uh, – Chris, you pointed out earlier that you think that Finn and Rose, that's going to be the, the – that's going to be the tie together there. Yeah. Uh, and I think you even mentioned Poe was kind of your thought. Poe, yeah. Well, here's my thought about Ray having a love interest. She may or may not, because if you think about it, go back to all the Jedi. Besides Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi did not have a love interest because he was married to the Force. Luke Skywalker does not have a love interest because he was married to the Force. Maybe we might hear about that now. But if Ray turns into this extremely, extremely strong Jedi, is she going to be married to the Force or is she going to have a love interest? That's a great question. Well, I, we're going to have to wait, wait on that. Uh, Audrey, uh, thank you for coming. I, I have one other question. Job, amazing yeah, job. Great, great job, sweetie. The, uh, my only other question from you would be, so the, we all know that they keep the names of the movies locked up and under wraps and they try, you know, we didn't even know this one was going to be called The Last Jedi till less, just less than a year ago. What do you think of, what do you think is the name of the next movie that comes out? I think it's going to be Wait, We Found Another Jedi. It's going to be like The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. It's going to be like Star Wait, Wars. We found another Jedi. Yeah, exactly. Star Wars, just kidding, there's more. Just kidding, there's more. <laughs> All right, well, Audrey, thank you for your uh, expertise and your input. Uh, we'll yep. clap you off. We'll, we'll, have a, we'll input a round of applause in here for you. Thank oh, you very much. Yay. All right, now that we're done with Star Wars, uh, Eric, don't you have something to get off your chest? Yes, I've got you under my skin. I have a lot of things to get off my chest. Mainly, it'd be about ten pounds that I need to lose. That that'd be the first thing I need to get off my chest and stomach and back and butt and thighs, everything. But what I really particularly, you know, the Christmas season just passes, so uh, you know, it's under my skin time. And and I, a lot of things anger me about Christmas. I could do an entire episode about what pisses me off about Christmas. But what really gets me hot, and it has for years, and it just doesn't stop. I thought it was a trend. Oh, I thought it was a trend, and it would go out like another fad, like fidget spinners or Furbies or wearing pants to church. But no, what, this thing is stuck around. It's 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 now in the zeitgeist. Everyone knows about it, and I'm talking about 
car bows on top of cars. Not only that, but people who buy their spouses and significant others cars for Christmas. Let me tell you why this is a big pile of bullshit. Because first of all, I've bought a lot of cars in my life because I trade them in. I pull little scams. I get all kinds of cars. That's neither here nor there. And that's for the cops to decide whether it's, quote, legal or not. The part is, is I've never had a bow on my car. Never had a bow. And if you ask at the, th at the, at the dealership, they don't have bows. Those don't exist. Meaning that person has to hunt down from a bow expert, from the bow expo down in the bow district, whatever the bow shop is that you buy gigantic car bows on. So first of all, I call bullshit on that one. Second of all, who the hell buys your spouse a car? By the way, I picked out a Lexus and the $600 a month obligation that came with it. You know, uh, yay, Merry Christmas. If my wife, I don't care how much she loved me, if she came home and said, surprise, I bought you a, a, a white Lexus, I would say there better be a bow around your casket because that's really where you're going to be going. I, I'm completely sick of it. This is not realistic. Quit trying to pr uh, propose this idea that middle America and the average uh, American is buying each other cars willy nilly. And they're doing it apparently every year because it's the same white couple with a golden retriever in the snow with a car parked on the driveway every year. So this couple is getting a brand new car every freaking year with a bow around it. And I say bullshit. That's under my skin. Well, now that we're all dumb for listening to that, let's get SMRT. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. First up, uh, first story. <laughs> this, is, this is one of my favorites of the year so far. So uh, students found out that their teacher was a gay porn star. Before you, now, of course. Before I'm you go sure any farther. Yes. When I first read the headline, I was like, hmm. And then I looked up the story and now I'm like, ew. <laughs> so thanks yeah, for that. It's, yeah, it, it really – but like uh, first of all, <laughs> OK, I've looked up a lot of things on the internet. But typing <laughs> – but typing like – you know, Mr. Piper, uh, fifth grade teacher slash gay porn star into Google was never anything I thought of doing. So I really want to know how this was originally found. Like they claim that, uh, there was some sites that they just happened to find it on or whatever I call bullshit. Someone was looking up something specific, which is the big, that's bearing the lead. That's a big part of that story. Yeah. You have to like, I mean, it was one kid that's probably looking up something exploring or whatever, and then ran into it and then could not keep it contained. Now, did they find out who that kid was is there a bullying story that's after this like is there anything like that yeah that's that, that's kind of what i wondered like maybe some kid that really didn't like the teacher so from the article this is in the new york post uh students at la spezia university of rome uh knew him as professor freddie but what they didn't know until recently that their math teacher ruggero freddie <laughs> which that's a great that's a great name was previously known as Carlos Mossi, a popular gay porn star. His triple uh, X rated pass resurfaced after he posted a video of himself flexing his muscles on Facebook and someone recognized him and contacted a reporter. So I, I want to know that that I'm sure it was a student. I, it was Had it was someone been. getting back at a teacher that this guy gave me an F or he was really mean to me. He bullied me, whatever. It was uh, it was it was a female student that was like, oh, you know, am I not too cute for you? And he's like, uh. <laughs> No, sweetie, I don't swing that way. And then she was, oh, if you're not going to take me, I'm going to get an A a different way. And then this was it. Yeah, don't you think? I gotta say the guy the guy is pretty ripped though. I mean this this guy's uh looks like he was built in a in a factory because he's got shoulders that are like a uh, uh, five feet wide and he's got a tw he's got a twenty six pack. I stopped um, looking at the pictures about an hour ago. Well, let me get to his bulge. Okay, well, it's it's listing a slightly to the left and pointing upward. No, I'm just kidding. But it's a pretty interesting story. No, you're, no, I, you're I, not kidding. You were looking really I, hard at it. I'm, I'm staring right at it. It's actually my new wallpaper. Uh, yeah. I'm, I've I've always kind of, you know, I had a couple of teachers in the past that I always kind of envisioned like, oh, man, I kind of wonder if Mrs. So-and-so does did porn in life because she's pretty cute. But I never – any of my male teachers, oh my god, I never would have thought that. Never would have thought it that. Had to, it had to have been a female student that was like trying to hit on him and he was like not having it because he doesn't go that way. And she was like mad. So she's like, I'm going to find something on this guy. <laughs> and then she well, did. And, and also like – it also depends how far back it was. I mean, I'm always willing to give someone a little bit of leeway if it's like, listen, 15 years ago, I was trying to pay off my student loan debt. I did a few things. It's different between, yeah, last week I shot a porn shot. You know, there's a big difference. Not nowadays. Everything that's on the Internet is exactly right when you see it. So it doesn't really matter at this point. If you did something 15 years ago and it, it it's not good for your career now, you should probably just find another career because it will be dug up. It's like being a cop. You know, if you somebody's going to find that out, it's 
it's like someone's being, gonna find it out. being a teacher. I mean, if you were a porn star in the past, perfect case, it's going to come out no matter what it's going to come out. There's no way to hide it with the internet. It's just like watching a movie of Sean Astin when he was a kid. He's a kid in that movie. I love him to death. He might be old now, but right now I'm looking at him when he was a right kid. Now and that's right kid. now. Yeah. So. I don't know how I would respond, though, or how I'd react if I found out one of my daughter's teachers was a porn star. I mean, I, I, I'd like to think that I would let it roll off my shoulders and not bother me. But I think some part of me would kind of be a little a little perturbed, uh, I, I think, at least a little bit. Depends on what well, you anyways, look like. Yeah, that's a big point, too. <laughs> hey, it'll make that parent teacher <laughs> conference is a lot more interesting. Yes, it will. Um, well, that was the end of SMRT, and now we get to the list. Tell us about the list, Chris. I wonder, wonder who, 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 who wrote the book out loud. Okay, so the list is something we do every week here on We Should Be Better at This, and it's one of my favorite segments because we get to pick and choose someone to go on the list. And if you haven't, if you don't know what the list is, the list is exactly what it sounds like that I'm going to say right now. It's a list of people that you're allowed to cheat on your significant other with. Male, female, it doesn't matter. Most of these people on this list are unreachable. You can't get them. The only time you can talk to them is on Twitter, and they will never respond to you unless you're an asshole. Maybe. I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> so basically, on our list right now, currently, uh, I'll go down Eric's list first. His first pick was Alicia Silverstone, and then it was Emma Stone. Christina mm. Ricci, Jennifer Love, huge tits, and then Kate Upton. And don't get offended if about the huge tits comment. That happens to everybody. Uh, my list, which are kind of the same. I have Alyssa Milano, uh, Dainai Gurur, uh, Scarlett Johansson, Nev Campbell, Shania Twain, and I'm adding another one this week. But it's weird because if we go first or second, if you go second, you kind of have to pick two because you think that person might choose yours. Being that but you know, I, I, I honestly thought that. I, there was a few times where I thought that or I thought, crap, you picked Alyssa Milano. I don't want to pick her too. You know, that would be too repetitive because there's, we're kind of on the same lines there. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I, we definitely got to pick uh, one or two as backups. Well, what do you got this week for me? What's your pick this week? This week I would have to say Michelle Rodriguez. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. You like a little uh, salsa in your life, huh? Yes. Right. If you don't know who Michelle Rodriguez is, she's the female uh, lead in a lot of the Fast and Furious movies. She was in SWAT. She's in Avatar. Uh, she's in a ton of movies, and she's got that bad girl vibe. Like, she'll go up and give you a big old kiss and a hug and maybe a, a reach around, but then she'll kick your ass if you do not go to the store and get what she wants. Like, she could literally take it out on you. And I'm looking at pictures of right now her on the Internet, and she looks pretty damn good in a bikini, too. Yeah, she gives me a half chub just thinking about her. But uh, <laughs> I got I, I think that she she strikes me as I was trying to picture what the headline like if there was a scandal involving her, what I would picture it would say. You know, that's how I do with all my celebrities. Like w if you picture Sean Penn, you say, oh, he he probably got in a fight and punched a photographer. He like that's just milk. what you think. Exactly. Yeah. If with with her, I really think I can picture her being in a domestic dispute where she just beat the living hell out of her boyfriend. Yeah, I agree. I mean, she, like, again, she has that bad girl. Like vibe. She would not she would not put up with any crap. Like if she found your boyfriend cheated on her or something, oh. that's going to be the TMZ story is Michelle Rodriguez beat the living hell out of uh, her boyfriend. They, and it would be a crime of passion. It would be a crime of passion. That's right. a really good addition to the list. I like uh, you. You've added. I mean, you've uh, gone quite the path there. There's there's a uh, uh, quite a lot I like on your list. I like to keep my, my options my... open as if they're sure as if they're possibilities. <laughs> I have no options. Um, I uh, uh, I'm I'm doing a deep pull this time. I'm going to kind of pull wait, wait, wait. Gonna... Not yet. Wait till after the show to pull anything. Uh, good point. That's right. I, after I look at the pictures of Michelle Rodriguez, uh, this one's the one that you're going to have to look up. Our listeners are going to have to look up, and I definitely uh, would suggest that you do. Her name is Michelle Jenicky. I'm adding Michelle Jenicky to my list. I've had a crush on her for years. Uh, it's amazing to think that she's only 24 because I felt like I've been in love with her for 24 years. You have to Google uh, Michelle wow. Jenicky. Wait, warm -up did you routine. realize what you just said? What? <laughs> you feel like you loved her, loved her for 24 years, even though she's yeah, 24 years from, old? From birth. Yes. That's from birth. Awkward. She was a very cute baby. Um, well, <laughs> she. She, oh she, I know. Uh, yeah, mark that tape in case I need that for a trial. Um, she, she's from Australia. She happened to be a model who was always really, really good at sports. So she's stunningly beautiful, but she's really, really fast too. She's an Australian hurdler and a sprinter. She actually won the silver medal uh, for the hundred meter hurdles um, at the at the two thousand like the what they call the Junior Olympics. And she competed for the Australian team uh, for the Rio Olympic Games. If you just Google, all you need to do Google Michelle. Jenicky warm-up routine her just bouncing around it's with a that j big, in case you're wondering 
with a J. It's totally worth it. But she's one of those athlete babes where she's stunningly beautiful, but she's also like I can pick. I, I I could take her to a baseball game on a date, and that would be she would probably be cool with it. She's she's into sports. She happens to be a stunning model. And gentlemen, she's single. You have a chance. <laughs> I have no chance in hell. <laughs> but uh, she's beautiful. Yeah, yeah she's gorgeous. She's really, really gorgeous, and I'm something about her bouncing around in that uh, uh, warm-up video. Uh, they've even made a GIF out of it. It's, it was like a fame, and don't tell me it's pronounced GIF. I will smack you. They made a, <laughs> they made a GIF uh, of her, and it was even a meme for a while. I mean, I've just oh my god! I it was the only time I rooted against the United States when she was running in one of the finals. I was like, "Go Australia! Yay!" That's awesome. Yeah, no, she she reminds me of uh, the the Gabby Reeses and the the uh, Sand. Uh, volleyball sand players what do you call that beach volleyball beach, beach volleyball. volleyball players that we get out of like huntington beach and stuff she has that kind of body she's she's damn she's athletic yeah she's really really good i just wanted to add someone that was a little deeper pull there uh well that is a great addition to both of our lists i'm pretty happy with both of those i don't think either one of us uh, could go too wrong with if nailing one of those uh, and i mean that the way it sounded <laughs> Um, and I, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, for it we does. should be better at this. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sinatra's Rat Pack. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Chris underscore Donovan, or you can go to DonovanChris.com. You can find my Twitter there. Uh, buy my book on Amazon. It's called Alcohol and Cigarettes. It's really quite good. Even my mother says so. Uh, and we would love for you to subscribe uh, where you do your podcast subscribing. Uh, and do do subscribe, unsubscribe, and subscribe again. It definitely helps our numbers. Please rate and review. Five stars. Say anything you want about us. Just give us four or five stars. We would really appreciate it. We want to keep bringing you content. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I also have a countdown show that's an alternative rock countdown show called Alt Mixed Up that's on uh, Dirty Radio. Just Google Dirty Radio. You can download the app listen to it every saturday morning and i believe he has it on saturday nights also it might be dirty radio but his song choice <laughs> i think i just lost him yeah there you go we just <laughs> lost all our listeners all right well uh, on that i think i will end it on that terrific joke and uh, chris you have yourself a good week and that is it for we, we should, should be better be better at this, at this. sometime have oh. a good week everybody catch you later